Welcome to our lecture online. Here we're going to talk about a very new subject in algebra called the inverse of a function. And yes, we sometimes learn how to methodically go through making that change, go from a function to the inverse of a function, but what is it really that we're doing? So in this series, we're going to try to explain what the inverse of a function actually is, also how to obtain the inverse of a function, and what the nuances are and the different, well, what we would call the different uh, rules and regulations of how we deal with functions and all the little tricks around what to do with inverse of functions as well. So let's go ahead and start with the basic question, what is the inverse of a function? Well, it turns out that let's say we have a given function and we write the function as f of x. It's a function of the variable x. Then we write that the inverse of that function is simply f with an exponent that looks like a negative 1 of x. So this is the symbol that we use to indicate that we have the inverse of a function. Of course, it doesn't tell you yet what it is. It simply says this is how we denote the inverse of the function f. Simply, we put a negative 1 as an exponent up there. It's not really the exponent. It's not f to the negative 1 power. It's just simply the symbol that we use. So don't confuse that with the exponent f to the negative 1. Now, what does it really mean? It turns out that let's say that we evaluate our initial function. We have a function f of x, and let's say that we evaluate the function by replacing every x by a to obtain another value. Now, a and b are simply just numbers. So we plug in a number for x, and we get y, and y is equal to b. So remember that y equals f of x is usually what we relate to a function, and so we evaluate y by plugging a particular value for x, and we get the value for y. So now, when we take the inverse of that function, if we now let x equal b, so that was the outcome of our initial function, if we plug that in, we get back the original a. So again, we take a function, we plug in a value for a, we get b, then if we take the inverse of the function, we plug in b, we get back a. And that's essentially what the inverse of a function is. Now let's show you, let's, let us show you an example of what that looks like. Let's say we have a function f of x equals x cubed, and now we're going to evaluate that function at x equals 2. So that means instead of x, we have 2, 2 cubed, which gives you 8. Now, here's the inverse of that function. Now, I haven't shown you yet how to get the inverse. That will come. But here's the inverse of the function. And so now we plug in what we ended up with the function. When we plug in 2, we get 8. Now we plug in 8. And so you can see that 8 to the 1 third power, which is the cube root of 8, gives us back 2. Gives us back the original number that we plugged in here to get the 8. So that's again what we mean by an inverse function. You get the function, you plug in a value, you get 8. Then you plug in 8 in the inverse function and you get your original number back. And that's the definition of the inverse of a function. Now, how do we get that inverse of the function? If this is the function, how do we get this as the inverse of the function? This is what we do. It's as simple as this. Here's our original function, y equals x cubed, and now we have to find the inverse of the function. How do we do that? We exchange every y becomes an x, and every x becomes a y. That's all we have to do. This is the inverse of our original function. Now, of course, we want to solve that for y. We want to write it like this. So we turn it around, y cubed equals x. We take the cube root of each side, the cube root of y cubed is simply y, and the cube root of x is simply the cube root of x, which can be written as x to the one-third power. And that's where we got the inverse of the function from. If this is the function, there's the inverse. How did we get that? All we did was exchange every x, every y became an x, every x became a y. We reverse the function here, we reverse the equation, we solve for y, and this here is what we call the inverse of a function. This is f to the negative 1 of x. So this here is the inverse of our original function. Our original function, f of x, was equal to this. There's the inverse. Now, when we get the inverse, all we have to do is plug in a number. We get a value for that. We take that, plug it into the inverse, and we get the original number back. That's what we mean by the inverse of a function. You might think, well, what in the world do we need it for? Well, there's actually some good reasons why we need to be able to take the inverse of a function. In the next video, I'll show you an example of that. It's kind of interesting that they never write y to the negative 1. It's always f of negative 1. Yeah, you're right. Because if they did, 
white and the negative one has other meanings. Yeah, and, and so that's why they use this particular notation. And yes, you're right, notation is really important here. We really have to keep in mind that we write the function like this and the inverse of the function like that. And when we start writing y and y to negative 1, it gets really confusing. Even though, yes, we use the function. And of course, if I want to be strictly correct here, I might have written like y of, uh, of a, for example, right? So this is essentially the right thing because here I'm evaluating the function, so I have to evaluate y. So yeah, notation is, is very important. All right.